What's going on guys? Me, David here back for another shave, man. So it's been a roller coaster of a couple of weeks. If you haven't watched my last video, um, you guys would have, uh, well, you guys wouldn't really know. Um, my sister passed away a few weeks ago. And just the, the love and support that I've received from the community, um, people reaching out, people supporting the, the fundraisers, the GoFundMe, I just can't even begin to tell you how much it means to not only myself, but my family. Everybody always thinks it's a little funny. That little, uh, little like spider. Ugh, gross. Um, everybody always thinks it's a little funny. Uh, the hobby that I'm in of shaving. It's fucking, it's odd. I mean, it is. Um, but my parents, seeing those names, knowing damn well there's nobody that they know. And saying... Hey, who is this? Who is this? I'm like, those are my people. Those those are the shave community rallying behind us as a family. Even though they've never met my sister, they've never met you guys, they respect me enough to help out when they can. And it has just been so overwhelming. I can't even... Yeah, it, it's just... I wish there was some profound way that I could... Um, explain how I feel, but God damn it, dude, it has just been amazing. It has been amazing. Um, you know, awful situation that myself and my family's in, but man, to know that I got people that again, think, think at least somewhat highly enough to help out like that. It's just incredible. So just thank you everybody that has reached out. Your messages are appreciated. Um, all the kind words, the donations, just thank you. Thank you so much. And now to that, I've been very clear on this channel that I am good friends with Peter Turkalis over at Ariana and Evans. Well, Peter decided to release his very first Bay Rum scent. And he actually dedicated this first run to my sister and donated a portion of the proceeds from from this first batch to help us blame my sister to rest and here it is right here it's in the ultima base you see right here it says for anna anna is my sister and this is empyrean bay rum empyrean is supposed to be the highest point in heaven so just what a fucking cool name what would just uh, and again just very thoughtful peter I fucking love you. My family loves you. And you just know that you are appreciated. And even though I know me and you were really good friends, this is something that you have done for others. You have done just, just the same. So as much as the community loves you, you show your love back to the community. And that is so goddamn valuable to me. I've always told you guys, when it comes to who I like to support in the community... It's those people that take part in the community, that, that actually give back. So not only don't just take money from the community to pay your bills, but you give at, at every opportunity you can. You actually take the time to have conversations with members of, uh, with the people. And that's something that you never shy away from. And just know I appreciate it from you and many, many others. If you hear me speak very highly of an artisan, not only because their product still has to be good. You know, I'm not again. No, no, no artisan has ever asked me to compromise my integrity talking about their product. Nobody. Even products that I don't like. I have never been approached by an artisan and say, hey, dude, hey, can you maybe say some nice things? I know I might be lacking here. Nobody's ever done that. So just know those artisans did. They do give back. You are valuable members of this community because you're you're taking and you're giving. That is just it's a unique situation. A lot of places don't do that. A lot of people don't do that, and you guys do. And Peter, thank you. I love you, brother. Appreciate you. Now, I've also been very open in this. On the subject of not being a big fan of Bay Rums. 
when Peter told me it was a bay rum, I was like, oh, let's see what he has. And one thing about Peter that I noticed in the whole area in the club brand, even if a scent doesn't tip, uh, just it doesn't in like fit into what you typically like, it's hard to say that a scent that he's released has been shitty. Like, there's some scents that are just fucking horrible. They should not exist. I'm not going to get into that th that situation. But there are some that are just like, what was this person thinking? None of them ever, nothing that I've ever smelled from Peter. Um, nothing I've ever smelled from Mike Doug. Um, Murphy McNeil. Those They've never released something that's just completely offensive uh, to the senses. So I'm like, well, dude, if there's anybody in this community that I have faith in, in terms of making something that I'll enjoy, it'll be it'll be you. So go ahead and run with it. Well, as per the usual, he didn't disappoint. So what you have here is a clove-free bay rum. You get the bay. You get a powdery note. He said he added some uh, a bit of a powdery note. Very light. It's not going to be uh, ridiculous. Just trust me on that. He added a powdery note. We kind of make it just a little bit softer. It is, you know, it does have my sister's name on it. And he wanted it to be something that even a woman could enjoy. No. So it's not a feminine scent by no means. Additionally, from that powdery note, you also get some sweetness. Which again helps lighten the load from bay rum because bay rum is just so strong and abrasive. This is all stuff that makes it much more palatable for somebody that's not a big bay rum person. So you get that masculine energy from the bay rum, but he mellows it out with with the powdery note and that sweetness. That sweetness actually comes from a little bit of pomegranate. I'm a huge uh, <laughs> pomegranate fan. I actually love eating pomegranates. They are the most fucking inconvenient thing ever to to eat because they're just a disaster uh, to kind of get out. They stain everything. They're, they're a bitch, but I still do enjoy them. I, since a little kid, I was eating pomegranates, so it's a pleasant note to have on here. And before I told Rocio, because Rocio. She's one somebody that fucking despises Bay Rum. I'm not a big fan of it, but I'm not fucking totally dead against it. There's been a couple. I think there was one by is it Lather Bros? It's uh I think Tropical Trance. That was a Bay Rum scent. Really, really enjoyed it. I think that's the one. It has like a fucking goofy ass flamingo on it. That's one that I really, really enjoyed. This one right here. So before I even told Rocio what it was, let her smell it. She really enjoyed it. Then I whipped it out on her. Let her know that it was Bay Rum. She was like, oh, you sneaky son of a bitch. She enjoyed it. AJ, my son, he really enjoyed it. He's like, oh, yeah, I want to use that. Uh, so it was a hit here in the house. It really, really, really was. So that's, uh, it was a relief. It, it was a relief. Again, I had confidence in it, but yeah, my family can be a little bit fucking stubborn. So let's go. First pass here. I know, but beard growth is long. It's just been draining, man. Everything that has gone on over the past couple of weeks, it's it's been real draining. I've had to spend a lot of time over at my mother's house. Really trying to hold things together there because um, I'll be honest with you, my parents are taking it really bad. Not naturally. There's there's, a, there's no shock in that, that the passing of the, one of their children would hit them hard. So, again, I, I believe they have every right to kind of fall apart here. And they sure have been. So I've had to spend a lot of my free time over there. Just 
trying to help prop people up. And that's okay. It's always kind of been my role in the family. I've always kind of been the solid one. I'm not the old, I'm not super emotional. Uh, I don't get super hot or super cold. I kind of just handle life and push everybody forward. So, and that's fine. It does get a little difficult sometimes because um, I do think that sometimes I forget to kind of take care of myself and let myself feel some type of the, some of those emotions. Um, the first day I really felt that I could really mourn my sister. It was the first day I went back to work after having a week vacation um, because I wasn't there propping anybody up. I wasn't holding everybody together. I wasn't trying to calm everybody down. Um, and the first day back at work was really, really tough. Um, I was miserable. But that was my one moment to kind of fall apart a little bit. And I really didn't expect to feel that way. And everybody at work was just absolutely amazing. They understood. They kind of seen the weight of it on me. And they're like, dude, don't worry about this. We'll take care of this. And they kind of let me cruise through the day. Just kind of let me be there and exist. And it was just, it was pretty damn incredible. It was just so kind of them. Um, you know, they, they, they believed me when I said that I wanted to be at work, but they also knew I wasn't in the right headspace to be doing all kinds of crazy shit. And they really, they carried me through that day. And then after that day, after the, again, that was, it was an awful day. That was my, probably my worst day since everything had happened. Um, after that, I felt like a weight lifted off of me. It really did. Um, even if you guys seen the last video, even there, I got a little bit emotional, but I really didn't let myself get too into the emotion. But that after that day, I really felt that I like, I let myself breathe and, and it, it was good for me. It was really, it really, really was and uh, really made a difference. And then since then, I've, I've had an easier time serving my role as kind of keeping everybody going. I got a fucking pimple right here that fucking hurts. I've been poking at it. And I'm trying not to just fucking chop it off right now. Yeah. So, with the fact that I am feeling better... Um, we're going to get into this a little bit. Because naturally, like I just said in this video, Peter's my boy. Fuck all the shave stuff aside. We have a real life relationship. Um, and I really care about the dude. I know that he's fucking good people. And there's nobody that can tell me any different. Now, is he going to be a perfect human being and do all the right things? No, nobody should be held to that type of standard. But... So when you're gonna fuck it, but if you're gonna come after him and run your mouth, well, I do talk a lot of crazy shit on here. And um, one thing I didn't appreciate that happened uh, over the last couple weeks, Pinnacle fucking grooming decided to go after uh, not only Peter, but the community. He did a post to one of those ugly little banker fucking troll things from uh, Harry Potter. Um, taking shots at Peter and the, or the Ultima base. Talking about how they can't believe people have been fooled by him, that he's fucking greedy. Even taking fucking shots at his height. Like as if he had any fucking control over it. It's just a fucking hater, bitch ass move. And, um,. And I don't understand it. Again, I've never been a fan of artisans airing their grievances public. And this guy's only real fucking grievance is that his business isn't as successful as Ariana and Evans. And there's a few reasons for that. Okay. It is not just because everybody is blowing their wad 
over at the Shaving Shop Club or any of that. Your own product is mediocre at best. And unfortunately and fortunately, I've actually never used pinnacle grooming. At least I don't think I have. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think I have. If I have, it tells you how unmemorable it is. But I've never wanted to buy this stuff from one. All the guys in my friend, friend group have used pinnacle grooming. They say the base is just okay at best. And two... Your fucking labels are fucking shit. From the get-go, they look fucking just absolutely fucking shitty. Some copy and paste stuff off of Google. And they're just, they're fucking awful. That's not an attractive product. I don't fucking see that stupid Snow White one and go, yeah, I gotta fucking get that one. Was, they're, they're fucking dumb. They're bad. And even now, the quality of the image has gotten better on, on, on his labels. But they still look... Like they're just Googled images that he's just slapping on there. And they just, they, they don't look good. So your product don't look good. It performs basic as fuck. Why the fuck am I, is, should, should anybody want to go to you? What's going to draw people to you? If you don't do anything particularly well, and then you're going to fucking shit talk somebody that does a lot of things very excellent. The bass is great. The scents are fantastic. He's fucking actually part of the community. That guy from fucking Pinnacle Groomy, he could sit on my fucking lap and I wouldn't know who the fuck he is. Now, is that a requirement that I know who you are for you to be successful? Fucking no. But again, there's a lot of people in here. Money is limited. Why the fuck are we going to spend money on somebody that nobody fucking knows about, nobody cares about, and then your product is just not that good? It might be okay at best. And then for you to fucking take shots. It, and it's just pure jealousy. It's a fucking, it's a sad, pathetic look. It just, it just really, really is. Like he, yeah, you can't say nothing that he's cheating his customers and nothing. None of this stuff. It's just, it just sounds like <laughs> nobody fucking likes me and it's his fault. No, I mean, no. don't be a bit, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Like, it's, so, it's such high school girl shit. Like, you're not you're not the pop fucking popular chick, so you gotta fucking go talk trash about the fucking cheerleader. No, well, that's probably a bad analogy. Peter is no fucking cheerleader. But, um, you get the idea. You get the idea. Yeah. And obviously... I've been around the shave community for a while. Uh, I know a lot of shavers. Never once. And again, when we're having a discussion about shave stuff, Ariana and Evans and Pinnacle Grooming, they never, the, 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 the two are never brought up in the same conversation. So, in all the conversations I've ever had that involve shave soaps, there has nobody that has ever told me, David, you gotta try this release from Pinnacle. It's fucking amazing, dude. It's a must have. Those words have never been spoken to me. And that's not Peter's fault. That's Pinnacle Grooming's fault. If you are not making anything that is memorable, why is that Peter's fault? Why is that the consumer's fault? That's your job, dog. You're the one supposed to do marketing. You're the one that's supposed to make your product look attractive. You're the one that's supposed to make something that's worth buying. And if you're not, that's on you. So I just found it weird, dude. It was weird. It was tacky. Um, it was like sometimes you just got to take your ass open like a man. And if your company getting your ass kicked... That's on you, dog. Like, there's people out here with a, over a thousand soaps. Yes, I know people with over a thousand soaps or have had a thousand, over a thousand soaps. 
So if they wanted your shit, they would buy it. But they don't want it. They have a thousand fucking soaps. And your stuff isn't something that they clamor about. Sorry. Like, you just it just is what it is. So for you to just take shots like that, and again, of a personal nature, if you're taking shots strictly on business, that's cool. But once you start fucking mudslinging and talking shit about something that people cannot fucking control, you're a punk motherfucker. Plain and simple. That'd be that. That's trying to be a bully. That really is. Ah, you're fucking short. Ah, you're fucking that. Like, don't don't do that. Don't fucking do that again. If you got some concrete shit in paper, that have some bad business practices, or even an opinion on a fucking scent, that's fucking fine. But once you start taking those personal attacks, it, it, it's just it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable, and people like that have no place in the community to be a vendor. There's absolutely no reason why my money would ever go that direction. None whatsoever. Nor would I even want to try your shit now at this point to possibly give a, a po positive review. Because if I use it, I'm going to be honest with it. And if it's pretty good, I'll fucking say it. But now, there's absolutely no fucking chance that I would ever fucking even want to give you any positive fucking feedback, any positive reviews, anything that could possibly help you. Because now you show poor character. And it's all out of jealousy. So, whatever. That was the end of the third and final pass. I'm going to go ahead and rinse all this stuff off. And we'll come back for the final thought. Alright, we are back with, of course, the matching aftershave. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little fucking shaky shake over here. Let's see. It is that classic go kick This is, again, I will say though, again, Peter, I love you. But... I'm not a fan of the milky aftershaves. Mm. Mm. So, from the aftershave, I get almost like a grapefruit smell off of it. Pretty interesting. Is there grapefruit in here? I have no fucking idea. But, I do get a little bit of like a grapefruit vibe. Which is pretty cool. I don't like eating grapefruits. Grapefruits. But, I do... Like the scent, so that's interesting. Hmm. Very, very good. So, hey guys, now, so the last time I used the Ultima base, um, again, very emotional when I was talking, so I wasn't focused on it. Um, there is some improvements on this one, according to Peter. He got some feedback that the slickness wasn't where uh, people wanted it, so he did tweak some stuff. I'm not going to go into what he did, but again, he has no reason to lie to me because, frankly, I don't give a shit. We, we, you, you know? Um, whether he changed it or not, I still like his fucking original goat to milk base. So, hey, whatever the fuck he's doing is fine. Um, but the skin feel, the, the post shave is fucking fantastic. Um, absolutely no irritation, no rough spots. Um, it was as enjoyable as it gets, as per anything that he releases. Whether it's the fucking Pedro Fiasco base or the fucking uh, this now, the, the more top end base. Everything he releases is good. And I'm sorry if you're struggling with that. So, uh, with that being said, hey guys, if you made it to this point of the video, you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much for riding with me through the 1990s, 1980s, and beyond. Now, I was just saying crazy decades because uh, Shady was making fun of me because I, I say that little line. And I actually don't really try to. It just kind of comes actual natural now at this point. Uh, I probably should try to fucking maybe script some shit because... Uh, Things go awry a little too often. But, hey guys, um, I imagine that Peter will be re-releasing this Bay Rum again eventually. I don't believe it'll be with this, um, like, the pinkish label. It probably most likely won't say for Anna. There will be, so um, I would bet that there's going to be another opportunity, particularly for club members, um, to be able to get their hands on this. And um, it's good. It's good. Bay, pomegranate. Whatever the fuck he added in there to make it a little powdery, I enjoyed the fucking wife approved, which was a miracle. And so there's that. So that being said, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you on the next shave.